Hello everyone, my name is Corazar, and welcome back to the Vintage Story Guide. We are back in the world on a clear day for once. Look how far we can see. It is so nice when we get these clear days, and actually I did check the weather with the slash when will it stop raining command, and we're going to have basically a week or so of clear weather. And I think that what better way to spend that clear weather around the base than to start building out the ascent to our new proposed spot for our smithy over here. I think that would be a great use of this weather, and that's what we're going to do today. Now, we are coming off the last episode where we put together these animal pens down here, and I just wanted to show you all the animals that we have Check them out. Look at all the animals that we have. Ah, oh, beautiful. I could just pet them and snuggle them and eat them all day. Okay, so yeah, um, there are zero, in case you were, you know, not keeping count. Uh, let me show you. So across the way here and down this mountain where I have this sort of ski slope, there is a trio of pigs that I was able to get out of the crap over there, but now they're hanging out down here, and no matter how far down I move these troughs, they don't seem to care about them, and I don't know what the deal is. The females have occasionally nibbled at troughs if they were already, like, nearby and had their faces in them, but the boar, this guy right here, is completely uninterested in the food, and I don't know what the deal is. He will not wander toward it, he kind of just wanders in circles. And I kind of think that their movement up here was basically a random. Because, again, it, it took them half an hour to get here from over there. And I was kind of nudging them and pushing them the whole time. And so I just kind of figure I'm going to leave these out and let them do their thing. If they ever make their way up here, then great. If not, then uh, I guess it's soybeans for us. So, yeah, that's... That's the plan. Great plan, huh? So, I'm going to put those out of my mind for now because I have been dealing with these guys for, oh, about an hour total. And I have had no end to the amount of fun that I could possibly have in dealing with them. So, let's get up here and let's talk about what we want to do here. Today is not going to be a let's finish and detail a big build day. This is going to be let's get up there and see what there is to see, and as long as there's an adequate place to build, or a place that we can sort of turn into a nice place to build, then we will start sort of building out a road up there. And by road, I mean bridges and ladders and stairs and towers, whatever we need to to get up to whatever's up there. And I'm hoping that whatever's up there is some kind of flat floor, otherwise we're going to have to do a lot more building. I think I want to grab some more kapok. Do we have any already made? We do. We're going to get some kapok, some kapok stairs, some more kapok stairs, and we are going to start building our ascent. And while we're doing that, I am going to answer a few of your recent 20 questions submissions, because I've gotten a bunch of good questions, uh, some that I have not gotten in certain categories before, which is exciting. So, yeah, I'm going to get everything ready, make sure I have enough food on me, and tools, and maybe keep the saw on me. And I might even want some more kapok, but then I will start building out, starting with the pagoda. We're just going to build the pagoda floor, and it's going to stick out a little bit here. I want the interior to be 5x5, five five, or a 5 block radius, actually. Or, sorry, diameter, not radius. That'd be a big pagoda. So the pagoda itself will end up being a seven block diameter build. And I'm thinking that this will sort of be the either the second or the outermost sort of block from the exterior of the circle. So with that being said, let's get to it. All right, everyone, it is that time again. It is time for 20 questions as we ascend this spire. 
Our first question is from Sam Survives. Have you ever bought and used wallpaper off a trader in Vintage Story, and how does it work? I haven't actually purchased any wallpaper from traders because it is just so expensive. I don't know a ton about it, but you can apply it to the solid surface of a block, and it will take over the texture of that surface. I'm not sure about whether or how you get it back. It's one aspect of the game I just haven't tinkered with due to the cost. Anna Chibi asks, Do you like horror games? If so, what's your favorite? I'm not the biggest horror fan. I can even be a bit jumpy in my own house when the trees cast weird moonlit shadows that chase me up the stairs at night. I didn't make it more than about 20 minutes into Amnesia the Dark Descent. That being said, there are a couple that I've enjoyed. One is the original Dead Space, which was real fun to play as a lefty due to hard locked keybinds, let me tell you. I am a bit better with jump scares than with super creepy gets worse the longer you think about it scares. I did also enjoy The Forest playing it multiplayer. That was a pretty big blast, and I think I can handle horror games better in groups than alone. Another horror game, which may not strictly be a horror game, but is chock full of horror elements, is Shadow Hearts from the PlayStation 2 era. It is a wonderful JRPG set in a post-World War I world, where you play as a young man who can fuse his mind and body with that of demons. You fight all manner of weird and horrible creatures. Does that count? If so, then Shadow Hearts is my favorite horror game. TJ asks, What's something you're truly passionate about that's not work or gaming? What brings in that breath of revitalization every time you pursue it? First off, thanks for asking this question. I talk a lot about video games on this channel, but this is an AMA, or Ask Me Anything segment. I think stuff like this is fun. My biggest passion is storytelling. Generally, I do this through writing, but also through Dungeons & Dragons, both as a player and as a dungeon master. I have less time and energy for writing these days, but I do sneak it in here and there. I love designing a character and then helping them grow organically into what they're meant to be, whether that destiny is a reluctant hero, a ruthless assassin, or a corpse dumped unceremoniously in a gutter. And there's nothing quite like putting the finishing touches on a story, wrapping everything up, and just basking in that feeling of catharsis. I don't let myself soak up too many of those rays, because then comes the editing, and then comes the next story. Tricky asks, is there any real-world architecture you really admire? A specific building, or perhaps just a building style? There are a couple that really make me want to stop and stare for hours. One of the lesser-known kinds of architecture is the method of weaving tree roots, mainly into bridges, that some cultures have been doing for thousands of years. That is just really cool, but it does have limited application for actual buildings. I generally trend toward two main types of architecture, with the caveat that in both cases I like my buildings to be intertwined with nature. I am big on green spaces. I really like modern buildings that have unique designs. Think the crazy wavy skyscrapers or buildings that look like boxes stacked on top of each other willy-nilly. Look up the Falling Water House. Toss some trees in the courtyard and around the buildings and maybe a stream through the property. Hmm. Perfection. I also enjoy traditional Japanese architecture, especially the house designs. There's just something about building so many squares that draws me in. Funny about that, huh? Dungeons asks, What do you think of the new terrain generation that Tyron showed off in the Vintage Story Discord server? I think it's magnificent. While Perlin noise makes for weird and interesting terrain, it doesn't lend itself to navigable, realistic terrain. I really hope Tyron is working on different types of mountains and slopes. It was a real struggle to find a place to build in the style I wanted to in the south. If there were terraced mountains like he showed off in one of his posts, the search would probably have been a lot shorter. Monty's Girl 65 asks, Why not harvest the deep drifters for the temporal gears? There are two reasons for this. One, when I'm caving, I'm usually there to explore and find treasure or ore or something. Temporal gears don't stack, so each one takes up a backpack slot that could otherwise be used to hold bookshelves, tapestries, gems, rare loot, and so on. The second reason is that leaving the bodies causes them to take up the spawn cap, meaning the game won't spawn any more until I go a decent distance away or until the bodies despawn. I like the little bit of peace that I get. Bogdan asks, In Lupine Ridge, you had quite a village built there. Do you plan on having that many buildings in the south too? And if yes, are you thinking of a more vertical approach? So I generally won't answer questions pertaining to what my plans for future episodes are, because it's very spoilery. 
And Vintage Story itself doesn't always lend itself to predictability. What I will say is that, assuming you're all caught up on the episodes, we are definitely building a lot of stuff into the face or interior of the mountain. As for the rest, we ought to watch and find out. Silent Storm Kaba asks, Are you planning to do anything with the top of the mountains, or leave it to the wolves? Same answer as last question, though the wolves do make it a less attractive place to build. But time will tell. Well, everyone, that is all of the questions that you've submitted in the last couple weeks. Thanks to everyone for submitting them, and I look forward to more interesting questions to answer in the future. Anyway, let's get back to what's going on inside our little mountain home. Okay, everyone, so I think you all saw our path up the mountain, at least in the dark. But let's take a look at what I think I want the path to be in the light. So we're going to have our pagoda here. We'll have a bridge across, and then we'll have a ladder. This ladder will be pretty short, and we'll come up into a staircase. And for now, it's just one block wide, but I do want to make it two blocks wide, and then put a bit of a, like a wall here so that we can safely ascend. And then this turns and heads up to this level. Now, I do have plans for what to put here. And here, I want to put a refractory furnace or cementation furnace, probably right about here. We can come up the stairs, we can hang a left into the furnace, do what we need to do, and then we're done. Continuing on though, we're going to have a ladder that goes up to here, which will then come to a very short and U-turn staircase that I bumped my head on. I'm going to fix that momentarily. There we go. Okay, so staircase does a U-turn and comes up to a second, or like, tenth ladder, which then comes up to a short staircase into what will be our forge. Now, fitting a full held hammer setup here will be very interesting to do, but I do still want to try, and we do need to sort of shore up this bit here. I'll probably bring some of these down to meet the uh, pieces sticking up here, just to make it look like it's better supported. But I think we can widen this out a little bit more and give ourselves a little bit more space to work with. So that will be something we're going to do here. I think I want to start by making this ascent and descent a bit safer. I don't like just how treacherous this is. And to the end, I've brought some fences, some more wood, and some more basalt stone in a couple configurations. And I want to just get some basics in here. First of all, I do want to finish up this staircase. Let's put that in now. And here we'll have a two block wide staircase. And we'll get our landing going on here. And then let's go ahead and we'll put in some basalt blocks. Like so. Maybe we'll just do blocks. I was going to put like stairs on or something, but I don't want to have a tall retaining wall here. I just want to put some fences down and be done with it. So let's just do that. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. We'll get these fences in. And do I feel the need? No, because the game kind of helps guide us along these here. So we're not likely to fall. Oh, yeah, we are. Okay, never mind. Go ahead and put this up. There we go. And then under here, in order to make it look like it's better supported, let's just go ahead and let's do some of these. Basically like this. And we're going to do like this as well, coming down. And we will need to chisel these a bit. Get these done. There we go. And then back to these. There we go. And that is that part of our ascent. Now right here, I want to shore this up. Let's put some basalt bricks in here to make it look like we have sort of 
shored this up so that it doesn't all fall down. You know what? We'll just use these slabs as much as we can to preserve our stone supply. And maybe what we'll do is on this corner here, we'll use some stone bricks. And then we'll continue this a bit like this. Maybe we could put something here. I don't know, like a some plants or whoops, there we go, fill it in. Some plants or maybe like a a lantern might be nice. If I had one. But that's why we're building this in the first place. We don't have any more lanterns. Let's build you back up the whole way. You are right at the edge, okay. Now that's all well and good, but what about the ladder area here? We don't want to have our ladders be resting on dirt. That would not be very structurally sound. So we're going to remove this dirt here. A lot of dirt, apparently. And we're just going to build this up probably with some granite this time. Just to sort of build up the mountain a bit. Nine, really? Thank you. And let's go ahead and we're just going to build this up to where it would be just with the granite. So we'll do that, and then we'll have a ladder that goes up, probably a full-size ladder. And then here, what we'll do is we'll take out you. We're going to put a little bit of wood in. So we'll have wood here. I'll just take you out. I'm here. Are you floating dirt? You are floating dirt. Goodbye, floating dirt. And then right here, we'll just do three pieces of full-size plank to make up the difference. Okay. And we need one more ladder right there. Now here, what we can do is, I'm thinking we'll do some more of these. So, and we'll also borrow that. And I'm thinking what we can do is we'll just bring these over the edge a little bit and make a little sort of cage for climbing down. Like so. And then we can maybe even... There we go. And we'll just have, like, this come down, like that. So we can just easily get up into it without also easily falling outside of it. So even... Oh, we can... Wow. All right. Well, you know what? That is fine, I think. I'm less worried about that than I am about going straight off this edge and down into that pit. That would be pretty bad. Now, while we're here, I do want to do something I thought of a moment ago. And that is, we want to get these fences in. But I don't want to bring it in like this. That just feels a little too small. So, I think what we'll do is we'll take these up. And we will just put an extra block here, here. Ah, perhaps it's here. There we go. See, we'll do it like this, and then we'll take up you and you, and we'll put you and you down. Like that. So now we have a decent sized little pagoda area, which is currently just a deck. And then for here, I want to do a somewhat fancier bridge, which we may not get to today, but I'm going to use the stone brick slabs to make some kind of railing across here, rather than putting down more of these, which would sort of split the difference on the blocks. I don't like that too much. So that brings us to this. What are you doing? What are you doing? No, no way. No way. Ah, much better. Okay, that brings us to this area here, which once again, I think we're gonna get rid of the dirt with the shovel that we totally have. 
and we'll do the same thing. Hello, stone. Just take you one out. Oh, bye. Do the same thing with these fences, and we will just have this come out here. Like so. And around. And then down. And then you will come down maybe three blocks. There we go. And this one, I think I'm going to leave as a single block wide, because we just don't need the extra... Oops. We don't really need any, any of the extra space here. And it is getting narrower and narrower as we get farther up the mountain. So let's put down you and you. And we'll just do the same thing we did earlier, and have a nice ring of basalt around here, like so. That will give us the chance to put down some more of this. And now we're out. Guess I'm making more. Okay, we are back with some more of these guys. Finish that off. And I think we'll just do a bit of this to keep ourselves from accidentally removing ourselves from the gene pool. And, yeah. I think we're getting just about done here. Let's bring you down. Don't really need those. We'll just do a bit of this and build the same kind of cage to keep ourselves safe as we descend. And you know what, let's fill out the ladders here, because it doesn't really make that much sense that we'd have to jump to reach our ladders. We now have a relatively safe path down the mountain. Let's go ahead and we'll just let's put this here just to give the illusion of safety. Now, along the back, I'm not really inclined to put anything. Although, given the size of the refractory furnaces, I might need to. We'll have to see. What I might do is the same thing we did at Lupine Ridge and sort of put the furnace up a block so that we can just sort of walk under it to add in any fuel and then reach the bricks that break. Although, since we do have some ilmenite and we have plenty of steel already, we can just jump right to steel pounder caps and go straight to tier 3 bricks, which basically never break. So I'm going to hold off on putting a fence there. But along here, I think we do need some more. There we go. Much better. I think we're off to a pretty good start here. Now, as to this top area, we're going to have our smithy. It's time to figure out exactly where everything is going to go. And it might make sense, and, and bear with me, it might make sense to only do three health hammers on one anvil, although I know that's going to decrease our throughput by about 25%. Or, I guess, 33%. About 25. Math. I can math. Just because there isn't a whole lot of space here, and if we were to have our hell of hammers set up centered here, well, we'd need to actually have the mountain be expanded that way, so I'm not, not sure how this is all going to best fit. Let's widen this out a little bit. Just see what we can do with this. Ooh, it's getting skinnier and skinnier. Okay, so we're at about the edge of what we can do here. That. I could maybe bring some more stone in to shore that up. Good thing I put it away. Right, guys? Are you available? You're sort of available. Okay. We can do that. Okay, so let's say we could put our health hammer set up like here, or even here. Probably there is about as far back as we can go, in which case we'd only really be able to fit three hammers around it anyway, leaving this area for our forge and for our own anvil, along with storage. Didn't think of storage, but then we're going to need to have the ability to set up our windmills. 
And I'm probably just going to do three windmills with one windmill directly powering each Hellhammer, because there's not really much sense in doing the large gears and everything for just sort of a small setup like this, where power is coming straight down to them. So that will be something for probably a later episode. That's a big, big task, I think. Let's go ahead and we'll just raise the roof here by... Is one block going to be enough? Let's find out. Okay, I think I can work with a three block high ceiling. It's lower than I normally would do, but you know what? This is also a very different location and very different build than what we're used to doing. Yeah, let's do a bit of that, and we'll do that so we can still get up here and see out. We want to have some open air to help cool ourselves, it's going to get really hot in here, and to help cool the metal we're working on after it's finished. So I'm going to come back up here with some more granite rock, and we're going to shore up some of these areas, and that might even give us a chance to expand this a little bit. Just a little bit. We'll see. Yeah, I might want to definitely bring blocks up here to shore that up. So yeah, let's go do that. Okay, here I come with the fresh granite. So let's go ahead and bring that down there and probably you down there. Gives us a balcony straight into some leaves, but that's fine. And then we can also put down maybe some of you and bring you down. And here we can probably, we you know what we could do. Let's build you out like that. And then we'll bring you up. Like that. Yeah, there we go. That gives us room to knock this out a little bit bring this up instead, giving us one more block of space. And I do suspect that we're going to have to knock out some of these anyway in order to fit our health hammers in here. We'll just leave you for now, that's fine. Now you need a fence, there we go. Yeah, we are probably going to have to maybe even just do two hammers. That gets a little slow though, I'm not a wild fan of that. We'll see what we can do to fit these in here, though. We might have to, like, put it, say, there. We need a hammer here. We need a hammer there. And then one here. Whew. And we can do it. I just, I'm not a wild, wild fan of that. It's going to look funny from the outside. So maybe, and maybe, maybe we'll slow things down. Maybe we'll just do two hammers, put it there and then have a hammer here and a hammer here so which means we need to move this brace over now well, we can put it here i guess that i think is going to be task for later maybe next episode i kind of am in the mood to keep working on this so oops so i do think that it would be wise to keep moving on this effort we do have a lot of things to do. We have a refractory furnace to build, and then we also have the actual forge and smithy to build up there, as well as plenty of decorations and lighting along the way. But while we are still here, let's have one last bite to eat. Let's finish out this bridge here and get our safety railings up. You will need to be a full-size block. No, okay, gotcha. There we go. Now I know these are not going to be as safe as fences because we can just jump up here. I'm not super duper concerned about that. Let's go ahead and let's put our lantern down somewhere. Like right... Let us hang you right there. That should illuminate the whole place. Yep, there we go. Nice. And let's get our hammer and our chisel. Let's go ahead and just chisel basically all of these go. And we'll just start with something like, you know, I connect that more. Oh. That disconnects you anyway. Okay, fine. 
You know what? I kind of like this. Anyway, so there is that. And I am very happy with how this is coming out. Well, everyone, that is about all we have time for in this episode of the Vintage Story Guide. I hope you enjoyed the trek up the mountain and the 20 questions answers that you all got, as well as the building out of our path up and down the mountain. In the next few episodes, look forward to building out our forge area, getting the materials we need for our refractory furnace, and just generally getting things set up because we need more lanterns, which means we need more plates. As always, my name has been Corazar. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.